I figure one of these days, Sister Judy's going to go, instead of here comes our special speaker, she's going to go, here comes our stupid speaker. And then, oh, uh, uh, he finally found me out. <laughs> you know, we, we are highly favored of God. We are the apple of his eye. We're precious in his sight. Because I was thinking, you know, you could, I've been like to shopping centers and the other day, Katrina, how you go to Ivy Tech, and there's like hundreds of people there. But you know, I could pick her out in a crowd. So she's special. Mm -hmm. To me, she's special. And that's the way, you know, there's seven billion people in the world, but God's people to him are special. special yes. We're special yes. above all the people on the earth. Um, you know, I did a lot of silly things up here. <laughs> yes. But I'm not up here to be stupid. No. Nope. That is kind of natural. But I'm not, <laughs> my purpose, my intent is not to be stupid. Um, even though I do stupid things. Because <laughs> what we want to do is do the will of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, we want to be timely because you want your message to be the message that the people need. You don't want to, you don't want to, you know, when Katrina came back from Israel because of the, the time changes, her days and nights got mixed up. <laughs> and it was horrible for her <laughs> to get back to where she was, and she's still not exactly right. <laughs> well, <laughs> take, take that as you will, but she's still not exactly right. But it was, it was awful for her because her body was, it was 8 o'clock in the morning here, and the world was going around at 8 o'clock in the morning here, Indiana time, but her body was, uh, what, seven 5 o'clock in the afternoon or 7 o'clock that evening. She was like totally backward. And if we give a message, that the people don't need, then what have we really accomplished? You know, we just we just beat the air. And so I want it to be timely, I want it to be the mind of the Lord. Yeah. I like it to be interesting. Now, I know I don't always meet that criteria, <laughs> but it would be nice if I would keep somebody interested and not just bore everybody to death. <laughs> I mean, it, although you don't have to pay to come here. I mean, you are getting this, you are getting this entertainment for absolutely nothing, so it shouldn't be a whole lot. And, but, but most importantly, is that it has to it has to be lined up with the Word of God, because this is this is we're not up here trying to give you fables and stories and make believe. No, no, no. Whatever we say has to be aligned with the Word of God. It has to be built upon this foundation. And if we're not doing that, then we're doing something wrong. So when I'm when. God's dealing with me, I always try to make sure that what I'm going to say is is right. It's not I'm not leading anybody astray. And I and you censor yourself. You know, you say, it, it, you try the Bible says prove the spirits. Try the spirit. Yeah. Like Jennifer was saying, not everybody that says Lord Lord is Lord Lord. No, no, oh no. I know yesterday Katrina, we were watching like the biography channel, the history channel, something. They had a lots of religious shows on, like the history of Jesus, the, the historical sites of Jerusalem, and they had some on the book of Revelation, and we'd be watching it, and um, they, would, they would make a point, like say about Revelation, and then they would read some scripture, and it would be all good in Bible, and then the next thing they would say is, most historians don't agree with this. Most biblical scholars say this is uh, not right, mm -hmm. and see they're 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 they're, spe they're spreading doubt seeds of doubt in people's mind. Mm -hmm. because you know this is what it is. It says if it says it, that's what it is. It doesn't matter what historians say or scholars say or Bible teachers say. It matters what it does say it's the word of the Lord, mm -hmm. and 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 it's important that this be on the inside. And when she's speaking about the Holy Ghost, that's exactly what she's saying. Because he will, he will make us understand all truth. Amen. He will lead us into truth. Yeah. And that's why you have to have the Holy Ghost inside. Now, every, some people here know that I'm really hard of hearing. I'm almost dead. And so I heard about what 20% of what Jennifer says. On Tuesday nights, I hear about 5% of what's going on. And some people I can't understand at all. A few I can understand very well. Daisy, for some reason I understand what she's saying. It just depends upon 
your voice rang, yeah. how loud you are. And But what I'm, I'm saying, I have to say this, that has really hindered me. Because not only here in church, but in the world. You know, because most of the time, even when I could hear, I didn't know what was going on. And now that I can't hear very well, I really don't know what's going on. And so that's really hurt me. But the thing that's really important is, do we hear what the voice of the Lord is saying? Yeah. And so, see, I've come to depend upon my wife. Lots of times I say, what was said, what's going on? You know, I can't talk to people on the phone, so I depend upon her a lot. But now, if you remove her from the equation, who have I got to depend upon? Now, we all depend upon the ministry here, Brother Pat, Sister Jennifer, Brother Ronnie, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the real person you need to depend upon is Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. And the real person you need to depend upon is Jesus Christ, not inside of him, but inside of you. Amen. Because when we were watching those shows yesterday, see, Brother Jerry's mind, before I come to God, could accept anything. The world just accepts whatever. Hey, that sounds good. That's believe it. Yeah, um, an elephant is God. But well, Trina said, she's heard people say that I give all my, my God, my God is the doorknob. I've heard she has heard somebody say that. That is my God, the doorknob. Now come on, that person not founded on the rock, folks. So what you really need is Jesus Christ on the inside that when all this other garbage is going around, you know, no, 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 that's not right. Yesterday, I, you know, when they were saying things, the spirit inside me was saying, that's right, that's baloney. Mm -hmm. But there's some people saying, that's right, that's right. Some people said, this is baloney and this is right. No, no. This is right, it always has been, always will be. Yeah. And the only way you know that is Jesus Christ on the inside. Amen. Okay, that has nothing to do with what I'm going to But this is going to be a real short thing, so you. Thank you, Thank Okay, real short. And then you guys just egg me on. <laughs> okay. Sick him, Lord, sick him. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm doing a brother running. I lost my notes. Genesis 2 7. Okay, Genesis 2 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, we're going to say, yeah, has anybody ever seen a baby born? Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, isn't that astonishing? Yeah. yeah. I've seen when a baby's born, they really do look like clay. I mean, the moment they, the moment they come out, it they looks are. like a lump of clay. Yeah, they do. And it just took my breath away. I mean, I, I filmed my daughter having my granddaughter, my first granddaughter, and uh, I can hear myself gasping in the video because, and you know, that, it just hits you. Man, wow, that's... That's wild. That's, that's astonishing. They, they come out and they look like a lump of clay. Mm -hmm. And then there's life there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's life. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? Well, the Bible just told you. <laughs> God breathed the breath of life into it. <laughs> now, we're going to say that this is the lump of clay that God breathed the breath of life into, okay? Hopefully. I haven't, I haven't practiced this, so we'll see, we'll see how this goes. Wow, you did good. Now, you have to delay the lung problem. Huh? Was that, there was no hand clap for that? That was. Yeah. That was yeah. Yeah. I don't think I can do that. <laughs> for me, that wasn't too bad. Now, if I get the knot tied, we're really going to go. Okay, now, this is, this is the lump of clay that God breathed the breath of life into. Now, we come in all forms and fashions, don't we? we all, I could blow up seven billion balloons. I thought about doing that, really, but I didn't think I could do that in 10 minutes. <laughs> but we could blow up seven billion balloons, and they would everyone be unique and different, right? Yeah. I mean, they're going to be different. I got a whole bunch of different things here, but I'm not going to waste time blowing them up. That has, oh, I, I thought they had two. I thought they had two ends. Like, okay, I can, I didn't have no wow, problem. that meant two. Anyway, nevertheless, <laughs> if we're all different, it doesn't matter. Some of us are big, some of us are short, some of us are older, some of us are younger. Daisy was actually there when, they, when God breathed the bells of life and Adam. Daisy was actually, we had a man on the scene. Watch out, watch out now. He's sitting on dangerous ground. Yeah. Uh, Daisy knows I just kid her. Yes, you do. Because I told her before, she's one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. 
you told me that. But however different we are, we're all different and unique, right? But nevertheless, we're still governed by the, by the laws of God. Men can say the laws of nature, but it's really the laws of God. Yes. Now, one of the laws of God is gravity. Now, no matter how smart this balloon gets, right? No matter. Now, men are trying to make themselves God. Yeah. You can see it all around us. Yeah, absolutely. But man will never become God. Yeah. This balloon can never operate outside the laws of God. No matter how many times I throw this balloon up, what's it going to do? It's going to come down. I mean, I can sit here and throw this up a million times. I can take a million different balloons, blow them up a million different ways. And it's always going to do what? Come down. Come down. It's always going to, it goes up, it's going to come back down because that's the law of God and that balloon has no control of that whatsoever. Unless you put helium in it. Right? <laughs> doesn't matter if I do it over here. It doesn't, now, it doesn't, I can concentrate, I will, I will this balloon to stay in the air. What's he going to do? It's never going to come down. Well, Brother Pat is smarter than me, so Brother Pat, I want you to will this balloon to stay in the air. <laughs> Brother Pat, what's the problem? I don't know. But, but see, there's not, the there's not a problem with Brother Pat. I don't know. There's not a problem with Brother Pat. But the problem is, the balloon is trying to do something contrary to the will of God. True. Okay? That's it. Now, I need you to go to, real quick, <laughs> And you know, another, another thing I'd like to say is that I know that I don't give a very good ministry. Yes, you I, do. I know I have right. in the past, but I'm just a shadow of my former self. But if, if, I, if I can put a thought in your head that you can chew on for a while, I mean, I've chewed on this thought, actually I've chewed on this thought for about two months because I thought I was going to do this a long time ago at the last fellowship meeting. So I did what I did, and I come prepared, and I didn't get caught on that fellowship meeting, which was perfectly fine, because most of the time I don't have anything. And then I thought, Brother Ronnie was going to call on me a few weeks ago, so I came prepared to do this. And Brother Ronnie didn't call on me, and that's fine, because it really doesn't matter to me. So I come prepared today, and I thought, well, if it don't happen today, I don't know what I'm going to do. But it, it did happen. But nevertheless, if, if, so I've, I've kind of thought about this a little bit, and I don't try to overthink things. Because my head gets really warm, it's what's like coming out of my ears. But um, if, if, if I don't really give you a complete thought, know that I've had a complete thought with it. I just didn't give it to you. But see, you can take a little bit of a thought, a seed, and if a seed's planted in good ground, which you're supposed to be good ground, then that seed can bring forth in you. Yeah. So Brother Jerry may just say one word that makes sense to you, but think about it for a week or two, and maybe you'll get more out of it. Okay, so if I don't do very good, then you can do some pretty good with it. That's what I'm saying. Um, John 20, 22. I'm almost done. I know I'm talk, hey, talking way too much. That's fine. Don't hurry. Right, you're doing fine. You're doing all right, brother. Go ahead. Um, and, when, and this is Jesus speaking. Well, it, it's Jesus, it's, it's, Jesus has just done something. But it says, um, And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now Jesus breathed upon the disciples and told them to receive the Holy Ghost. And now I'll read uh, Acts 2 and 4, and that'll be all. Acts 2 and 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, now, God breathed into the first into this clay and he made a living soul. But when the Holy Ghost comes upon us, Okay? <coughs> the things that are impossible with man is what with God? Possible. possible. When you have the Holy Ghost, now we're all fighting problems in our life, right? And the problems that we fight sometimes is just like this balloon. It's impossible for this balloon to stay up. It's impossible for us to overcome the problems we have in our life ourselves, whether it be bad habits, whether it be depression, whether it be uh, uh, health problems. We're all fighting something in our life that that it seemingly is impossible to overcome. Is anybody fighting anything that you think is impossible to overcome? Amen. Or that you, my back has been hurting for, and I'm claiming victory in it, and you know what? It feels better today. But I have been having horrible problems with my back for probably six months. And I can't, I mean, I know I'm like a preacher. I know I have, I've sat in this way for 25 years. I know I have, 
faith. I know, I know God's a healer, but I'm not healed. My hearing. I've been prayed for for years for my hearing. Why, why can I hear? I know God's a He did it in the Word. He made the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Yes, I know He can do it. But Absolutely. why haven't I received it? Is it impossible, Jennifer? Is it impossible, Jennifer? Jennifer, is it impossible? No, it's not. No. She's shaking her head no, but she wasn't saying anything. See, you got, you know, you I couldn't hear her head rattling. Why is it not impossible? Jennifer, Because when we receive the Holy Ghost, right? God, we receive the Holy Ghost. Look, this is doing an impossible thing. This can't do it, but this can. Why? Because this has a different, this has a different, this has a different spirit in it than this does. When we receive the Holy Ghost, the things that are impossible to us is easy with God. Huh? Amen. Right? Oh, that's a good thought. The things that are impossible for this guy uh -huh. is easy for this guy. Amen. This guy's going down. This guy's going up. <laughs> this guy's defeated. This guy's got the victory. Amen. So, the Holy Ghost in us makes all things possible. Amen. God said He would give us the desires of our heart. So you know what? Don't give up. Amen. Don't give up. Because we're this guy. This is a new thing in Don't give up. That's right. That's good. And Never give up. You rise. That's good. That's good. Yeah.